Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me again this week. And this week, our focus is going to be on surviving friendly fire. Surviving friendly fire. Now, friendly fire is a term that is used to describe um, military fire or fire from whatever weapon trees that w military may use, be it bombs dropping from airplanes or if it's artillery that is being fired uh, against an, an enemy. And it just so happens that the friendly fire, the fire that is di directed towards the enemy actually hits an ally or a friend or some unintended target. Whenever the fire, and it happens, the, 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 the weaponry uh, obliterates and damages and injures and destroys and kills allies, then that's called friendly fire, or you're fi you have fired on a friend, and it's unintentional. Some of the um, great uh, depths, and I don't know, maybe you shouldn't say great and depth in the same sentence, but some of the most noted depths of some of the most um, remembered military figures in history often died as a result of friendly fire. The uh, Confederates had a soldier named Stonewall Jackson, and of course, uh, I am radically anti-Confederate and even uh, use this analogy with great trepidation and, and great anxiety. But here's an example of what I mean by friendly fire. Stonewall Jackson, the racist, white supremacist, and inhumane man who fought for the Confederacy to maintain black slavery, he was a great military general, great te technician. He wasn't a great person, by the way, but he was a great general. But he was uh, Robert E. Lee's right-hand man. And he was killed in a battle, but it was his own troops who accidentally killed him. That's an example of friendly fire. You remember after 9-11, there was a football player named Pat Tillman. And uh, there he is, Pat Tillman. He was an NFL player. But after 9-11, he joined the military out of patriotism and he wanted to fight for, for the country, for the United States. He was killed in battle, but we know that he was not killed by the, uh, by the enemy troops. He was killed by his own troops accidentally. That's what's called friendly fire. There was a great senator in Louisiana uh, back in the six, in the, excuse me, the 1930s. In fact, he could have become president and challenged uh, Roosevelt, uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, his name was Huey P. Long. And there was an assassin who was trying to get to Huey P. Long and Huey P. Long's serve, secret service or guards shot and killed the, the assassin, the would-be assassin. But in the process of killing the assassin, they also killed Huey P. Long. This is what's called friendly fire. And just like Huey P. Long, Stonewall Jackson, and uh, Pat Tillman experienced friendly fire, we also experience friendly fire. And that is we experience hurts and pains, not simply from our enemies, but also from some of our friends. Sometimes we experience friendly fire as Christians from other people who are supposed to be Christians. One man who had been hurt by other Christians in his church and had what's called church hurt, said, I will never come back to the church. I wish that the church today was much like the church in the Bible. Well, if he read his Bible, he will understand that there's really not much difference between Christians in any age. In fact, if you had lived in the first century during the time when the New Testament was written, you would find out that Christians often hurt each other. In the book of Galatians chapter five and verse 15, we are told, um, Paul writing to the Christians, 
He says, but if you're always biting and devouring one another, please note he's talking about what Christians are doing to each other. They're biting and devouring one another. Devouring is what a wild beast does to its prey. And Paul is saying that Christians who are supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ, instead of extending the right hand of fellowship or extending the right fist of fellowship and are biting and devouring one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. So this is friendly fire. And we often read in the Bible where there were people who experienced friendly fire. For example, uh, Abraham putting out his own son Ishmael because of the pressure of his wife, Sarah. And he puts out Hagar and Ishmael. That's friendly fire. Father hurting his own son. And parents sometimes do hurt their children. That's, and vice versa, children hurt their parents. That's fire from somebody who should be your friend. Or remember Jacob stealing Esau's birthright. They were brothers. I mean, it's one thing for the enemy to steal Esau's birth rifle, but Jacob to do it, that's friendly fire. Our Cain with his club in his hand, dripping with blood because Cain out of jealousy for Abel, his younger brother, kills Abel. That's friendly fire. Our Joseph's brothers, remember, who sold him into slavery. It wasn't his enemies who did it to Joseph. It was his brother's family fi friendly fire. Or Peter denying Jesus three times. That's friendly fire. I remember the story of Ammon and Tamar, and Ammon is the half brother of Tamar, both uh, the children of David. And Amnon deceives the innocent Tamar, who is a virgin, and rapes her. And after raping her, I want you to see what it says in 2 Samuel chapter 13. And if you'll skip down to verse 20, it says this. It says, her brother Absalom said to her, has your brother Amnon had his way with you? Now, my dear sister, let's keep it quiet. A family matter. He is after all your brother. Don't take this so hard. And she took it hard. Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's home, bitter and desolate, because it came, the rape came from her own brother Amnon. That is friendly fire. And I might be talking to somebody who is dealing with friendly fire, that the hurt did not come from an enemy, it came from a family member, it came from a friend, it came from somebody you really believed in and someone you really trusted. What do you do when, you, when, the, when the fire comes from a friend? Let me quickly suggest three quick things, and we'll, do, we'll be looking at this all week. Number one, don't be surprised. <laughs> Don't be surprised. First Peter chapter four, verses 12 through 13 says this. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process uh, with glory just around the corner. Don't be surprised. Secondly, I would suggest don't be vindictive. <gasps> You fired on me, I'm going to fire on you. First Peter chapter 2, again, verse 21 says this. This is the kind of life you've been invited into. This kind, this the kind of life Christ lived. He suffered everything that came his way so that you will know uh, that it could be done and also know how to do it step by step. He never did one thing wrong, not once said anything amiss. They called him every name in the book and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He was not vindictive, although we do know that Jesus was killed by friendly fire. He was betrayed by Judas. That's friendly fire. Don't be surprised. Don't be vindictive. And then finally, keep moving forward in your life. Keep moving forward. First Peter chapter three, verse 13 reads, if with heart and soul you've been doing good, do you think you can be stopped? Even if you suffer for it, you're still better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought. Keep moving forward. Well, this week, my brothers and sisters, our focus is going to be on friendly fire. Um, 
how to handle it. What do you do when the attack comes from somebody you love and somebody you trusted? And if people in the Bible experience friendly fire and not only could survive and thrive beyond it, then by the grace of God, so can you. We'll be talking about this friendly fire this week. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us to understand what many people in the Bible experience and what many of us are experiencing that's friendly fire. Help us not to be surprised, help us not to be vindictive and help us to say, I will move forward in spite of, by your grace. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining me again with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we extend an invitation to you to accept Christ as your Lord, become a part of the church. We'd love to have you at St. Stephen Church. Uh, email us, newstart at ssclive.org, and we will get back with you. Look, you have a great day the rest of the day. We'll pick up on this tomorrow, but until then, don't forget during COVID-19 and with this new variant, the Delta variant, don't forget, please get vaccinated, get vaccinated. But in the meantime, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and remember God, is still in control. I will see you tomorrow.